What is up amigos? Today we are looking at the effect of the Reynolds number on a car's drag coefficient. So the Reynolds number is effectively, in this particular case, changing the velocity. If we change velocity up or down, it will change the Reynolds number. We do have the density, the length, and the viscosity. However, they usually stay constant, so it's mainly just the velocity that will change and dictate whether a car's drag will change or not. So how does the car's drag change with the Reynolds number? To show this, let's do a quick graph and we'll explain why this graph occurs. So on the x-axis, we have the Reynolds number, and this is effectively just a reflection of the velocity. And then on the y-axis, we have the drag coefficient. And when we're at zero, so we have no, no um, velocity, it's not moving at all, and we just move off the mark a little bit, we might have a drag coefficient of about here. As we increase the Reynolds number, the drag coefficient will start to drop a little bit, and then we'll start to plateau. In terms of velocity, this occurs around at about maybe this plateau starts to occur maybe at about 60, 70, 80 kilometers per hour, and depending on the car. And this region here between 0 and 60k is approximately, this is where this dramatic drop occurs. So what kind of values are we looking at here? Well, if the car starts at about like let's say 0 0.33 perhaps, which is a little bit of a high drag for a car, it might drop to 0 0.28. So about a 10, 15% reduction, depending on the car. And then we get to this plateau region where if we increase the velocity even more or the Reynolds number even more, it doesn't really change the drag very much. If we increase the velocity or Reynolds number even more, so we go even faster, let's say 300, 350, 400 kilometers per hour, then the drag will start to increase a little bit and that's because of compressibility effects. So in this range here, we have just incompressible flow. And that means that we're not really cramming the air together and increasing the, the density and or creating um, wave drag is called. So we don't really need to worry about this region here because most cars don't get up to that kind of velocity, at least not throughout their lifetime. This region here, which is up to let's say 250 and below, is where most cars will sit for their entire lifetime. And this region here is really like the cruising speed when we get onto highways and things like that. So why does this occur? Well, the Reynolds number really has a great effect on the boundary layer. And in our podcast, for example, and in our fundamental aerodynamics vids, we often talk about how boundary layers form over any object. So let's say we have a flat plate here. That's the ground. We have the flow coming over and it has a velocity of u infinity. As the flow comes along, the boundary layer will start to be quite laminar. What this means is that the velocity profile will look like this. So at the wall, the velocity will be zero. As we go a little bit further up, it will start to increase increase more and more until we get to the 99% of the free stream velocity. And at that point, we say, okay, that's the end of the boundary layer. That's the boundary layer height here. As we go along, the boundary layer will become more and more turbulent. So the boundary layer profile will start to look more like this. So a couple of things to point out. The velocity near the wall is much greater than here. And what's more, the height of the boundary layer is greater. So H2, let's say, and H1. H2 is greater than H1, and the velocity at the wall, let's say, so V2 at the wall, is greater than the velocity of V1 at the wall. So what does this do to the vehicle? Well, if you looked at some of our other videos on automotive aerodynamics, we go through, for example, the A-pillar, the aerodynamics over the A-pillar, and the C-pillar, and the backlight, etc. Let's go through a few of these examples. So if we have a regular car here, we have the front windshield, the roof, the hood, uh, sorry, the um, bonnet, uh, I think you call it the hood in America, then you have the wheel, etc. We have the A-pillar just here. So this is the A-pillar. This is the windshield here. No, don't worry about the, <laughs> the writing. And then we have the C-pillar at the back. So over the A-pillar, often we will get the flow coming around and it will separate. And this is because the A-pillar might be very square. If we round the A-pillar, then it will stay attached. When we get flow separation, we'll often get a vortex, for example, but also get increases in the drag coefficient. Now, the reason why the flow separates over the A-pillar is because, let's say we look at the A-pillar from the top, so we're looking at the left side of the car, we have the windshield and then the A-pillar here that radius here, 
has a major effect on whether the flow stays attached or not. If it is very sharp, the flow coming around doesn't have nearly enough energy to be able to stay attached and then it will just separate. If we round it a bit more, then the flow, even if it has less energy, can come around and it will stay attached. Now, alternatively, we could always just make the flow move faster. So in other words, increase the Reynolds number. If we do that, the flow coming around here now, so let me draw it again, will have enough energy to stay attached. And that's what's happening here. So because we have such a high Reynolds number, the velocity is greater and the flow coming around the A pillar, for example, has enough energy to stay attached, which means that we don't get this vortex and the wake, which means that the drag coefficient doesn't have to increase, it actually drops. Similarly, for the C pillar, we have the flow coming around the back and if the C pillar is too sharp, then we'll get flow separation and we'll get a vortex happening here. If we have either a more rounded C pillar, as if you've seen our videos and or, increase the velocity, so we increase the Reynolds number, then the flow coming around the C pillar will stay attached more and the drag coefficient will drop. Similarly, over the back light here, so this back roof part, if we have the flow coming along and it's moving quite slow, when it comes around the top here, it will separate and we'll get a wake here. If we have a fast moving flow, it will stay attached and the drag coefficient will drop. So these are a few ways that the Reynolds number increasing will reduce the drag over the car. Similar kind of things happen for the diffuser, so the back part, which we haven't covered yet in our automotive aerodynamic videos, we will get to in a second. Also the, diff the underbody, also in the wheel hubs and everything. That's the main general effect of increasing the effective Reynolds numbers. So let's quickly go through why this happens again. So if we start off with a very low velocity, the drag coefficient will be quite high. As we increase the velocity a little bit, the drag coefficient will drop significantly and then it will start to plateau. So we won't really get a reduction in drag with increasing Reynolds number. The reason why we get the reduction to begin with is because the velocity goes from a very laminar boundary layer to a quite turbulent boundary layer. At the very least, the flow near the wall is very fast. So it may not be completely turbulent depending on what the velocity is and where the flow is over the car, but the velocity will be faster near the wall, which will allow these flows going around these corners like the A pillar, the C pillar, the backlight here, the diffuser, whatever, to be able to stay attached more readily. And that means that we can get this reduction in drag. If we increase the velocity and or Reynolds number even more, well, we're not gonna have that much of a reduction in drag because we already have the flow attached. So we're not, we can't get more attached, it's already completely attached. So that's why we don't get any greater reductions in drag. So that's the effects of the Reynolds number on the car drag coefficient. Make sure to like, subscribe this video. And if you want to read a textbook that goes into this in even more detail, check out Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. It's a really nice textbook that I like on this subject. And you can find the link to it in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.